My grandmother was born in 1918 in rural Prince Edward Island. She was a mother, a wife, a sister, a daughter, a widow, a l- avid learner, and a poet. My grandmother had a steadfast love of learning. She loved to listen to the radio, she loved to read, and she loved to write poems and prayers throughout her lifetime. When I was an adult, I learned how these poems and prayers sustained her throughout her lifetime. Her love of education sustained her. Let that sink in. Her love of learning sustained her. Now, for many of you here today, when you think about your own experiences in education, education sustained me may not be the first thing that comes to your mind. (laughs) Maybe what comes to your mind are those kids who bullied you. Or maybe you think about the teacher who made you doubt yourself. Maybe you don't let yourself think about education at all. Maybe there's too much hurt in those memories. I'm here today to talk to you as a social work educator. I have been working in the Northwest Territories throughout the last decade, and in that time, I have had the opportunity to work with social work professionals, students, and other professionals in our community. And each of them have brought with them their own unique experiences of education. And I had the awesome task of meeting them there. In their memory of school, the feeling of learning, the challenge of performing, their memory of education. But the task of an educator is not just to meet them there. The task as an educator is to show up as a meaningful member of their learning community, to guide them with empathy for their past experiences, both in life and in school, to see them as whole people, and to treat them with unconditional positive regard. Now, any social worker in the room is hearing terms that they know, concepts that run through your veins every day as you show up to help people. These are the touchstones of the helping profession. And I'm here today to talk to you about how these concepts can transform our relationships with other human beings. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to imagine yourself back in school. This time you're in college. You've moved to the city from a small community, and you've left your family back home. But you are turning the page on a new chapter of your life. Now let's fast forward a little bit, and it's your first December in the city. Your mind, instead of being filled with sugar plums dancing in your head, it's filled with the stress and anxiety of remembering theories and concepts that you've been learning. And you are feeling the pressure of this time of year, both the stress of the holiday season and the pressure of performing at finals and you might be feeling like you're not going to meet those deadlines. Before you know it, the first deadline has passed you by, and you've missed it. You have to shake it off. That one was only worth 15%. You can make it up. But before you know it, the next one is racing toward you even faster than the last one. And the stress and anxiety are getting to you, but they're not writing your papers. you find yourself figuring out what you're going to do. So maybe you crack under the pressure and you throw in the towel. Or perhaps you manage to pull it off. But in either scenario, you spend your holiday break deep in self-loathing and self-doubt. And this is where we're going to change the story today. This time, when it comes time to hand in your paper, you show up and you're filled with stress You're tired, your eyes are tear-filled, and you are so ashamed that you're just praying your teacher isn't there so you can slide your paper under the door and make a break for it. But of course she is there. Your teacher meets you there with empathy and with warmth. In this scenario, there is no disappointment. There's no criticism. They just meet you there, and they see you as a whole person. They know that you have a complex life and all the complex feelings that come with it. And this time, instead of being met uh, with a closed door, you're met with somebody who just meets you there. And when they meet you there, they offer you a space to be a whole person. Imagine that scenario. 
As an instructor, what it means to see someone as a whole person and to meet them with unconditional positive regard is that we don't judge the circumstances around how our students have performed. And we understand that there's a bigger lesson there to be learned. And the lesson that you learn on this cold December day when you're sneaking your paper in is that you matter and you're seen. It changes the relationship that we have with other people when we see them as whole people and when we lessen our expectations of how they may be dealing with their lives. So for educators in the room, think about what that might be like to meet a student who is stressed and worried and doubting, but to meet them from a place of compassion and connection. It changes the way that we interact with each other. And in my experience, when I am able to meet my students from a place of trust and vulnerability and compassion, I change and my students change. And the relationship that's part of the learning has changed. That's a powerful moment in a teaching relationship. And it's certainly a powerful moment for students. When we meet someone with compassion, it means that we're going further in trying to understand their lives. We're going further in what their learning might mean for them. A dear friend of mine recently said, compassion is the embodiment of understanding. Brene Brown is a social worker and a research professor at the University of Houston. She's very inspiring. I see some raised eyebrows. Some of you have watched her TED Talks. <laughs> well, Brene Brown has spent her life trying to understand the unique relationship between empathy and vulnerability, courage and shame. So when we choose to meet another human being from a place of vulnerability and understanding and compassion, we're asking that relationship to change, and we are presenting students with an opportunity to make themselves vulnerable and open to new experiences of education. That's powerful. So I'm going to bring you back to my grandmother. My grandmother in cha in, uh, changed my life through her love of education. But the reality of that story is that she did not get to finish her education. She left when she was a young teenager, being forced to leave despite an obvious love of learning because that was the norm of that time. But my grandmother didn't let that be the only story that we knew about her experience of education. She overcame the shame and the vulnerability in order to tell us another story about her education. And the story that she told us was not one of shame. We all love to tell how much my grandmother loved to learn. My grandmother was such an inspired learner that one summer, she even taught herself to cross-pollinate a zucchini and a pumpkin, creating a zumpkin. <laughs> so my grandmother made a choice about the story that she told us about her love of learning. And she chose to frame her learning throughout her lifetime from a really beautiful and vulnerable place. She did that for us. And what I've seen in my experience with other people is that when I am able to open myself to another human being from a place of vulnerability and compassion, beautiful things can happen. And relationships can change and people can change. That dynamic has allowed my students to change, myself to change, and the people that we meet to change. So what I want to leave you with today is as you walk out this door and you find yourself in a relationship with another human being, and maybe it's a difficult moment in a relationship with another human being, choose to take a step forward in the direction of vulnerability. Consider how that might impact the relationship that you're having. You don't have to make it all the way on your first try. But as we continue to nudge ourselves forward, in the direction of vulnerability, we begin the change. Masicho.